Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a simple hypothesis test for population mean. And uh, specifically we're going to use a t-test here. Okay, so first let me make some data. So I'm going to make a variable called df for our data frame or whatever. We're going to just use data from 1 to 20 and by 1. This is simply to make the data. Okay, so the mean of df is 10.5. The standard deviation of df is 5.9. Now, let's say we want to do a t-test. So I'll save this t-test to a uh, variable called a, t-test, an object called a. So here, first argument for the function t.test is the data. So this is our df. Next argument we'll need is to define the alternative hypothesis. And here you can put one-sided uh, or two-sided alternative. We're going to keep it simple, so we're just going to do a two-sided alternative hypothesis. And we're going to set our mu equal to, let's do 10. So this is the null hypothesis. Okay? And we can also ask for a confidence interval of our choosing. So let's just choose 0.95. It'll also give us a 95% confidence interval. Let's hit enter. So we made a mistake. It's two dots sided. There we go. Let's see what A has for us. Okay, so we see R did a one sample t test using df as the data. It calculated the t statistic, degrees, degrees of freedom, and gave us a p value. Now we could do whatever we want with this p value. Depending on what our significance level is, we can choose to accept or reject. You would ex you, uh, uh, fail to reject or accept, excuse me. We would fail to reject uh, no matter almost wh any, what alpha we chose here, right? So it also tells us explicitly that our alternative hypothesis was that the true mean is not equal to 10. And here's the 95% confidence interval for uh, our, uh, uh, for mu for our average, okay? And here it also calculates x bar. So let's just look at some of the attributes of A. A, remember, is what I defined this t-test to be, okay? I set it equal to A, okay? So A dollar sign, and here are all the attributes, okay? So I could call on any one of these, and a lot of these are ways of isolating these values over here. Okay? And you can see, so a dollar sign statistic is going to give me the t stat. A dollar sign parameter is going to give me the degrees of freedom. A dollar sign p value is going to give me the p value. Conf int is going to give me the confidence interval. Estimate is going to give me x bar. The null value is going to give me the null value that I placed here. <laughs> the alternative is going to tell me uh, that our alternative was not equal to 10. So this guy right here. Method is going to tell me that it performed a t-test, a one sample t-test. And data name is going to tell me the data that I used, df. So let's just show one of these. One of the more useful ones, we want to look at our p-value there. You see, so this matches up with the p-value here. Okay. Another thing that you might be interested in is the uh, te uh, test statistic. So statistic, 0.3777. Now let's calculate this ourselves and see exactly, let's see that we get exactly the same thing as the t.test function gets. Okay, so remember how to convert an x bar to a t statistic, t score. That's x bar minus mu of x bar. So our x bar was 
right? We calculated that earlier. That was the mean of DF, right? Let me scroll up and show you. That's this guy right here, right? Minus mu of the null hypothesis, right? Which we defined here, divided by the standard deviation <coughs> of DF. That's the sample standard deviation of our data divided by the square root of the sample size. And that's just a way to do this. Length of the uh, okay? So that should cover us with enough parentheses. And voila, we get the same t-score, the same test statistic that the t dot test function got okay and we know of course that the degrees of freedom is the length or n minus one right the length of ds df minus one i actually set it equal to one which is disastrous okay let's look at df again we could remedy this by using the up arrow. So again, length of df minus 1 gives us our degrees of freedom, which is 19. Our D df was unfortunately the name of our data set. And also, df is abbreviation of degrees of freedom. So don't confuse the two here. I happen to uh, didn't I didn't give it much forethought here. So here, DF was our data, and DF here is the degrees of freedom. Okay. Hope that didn't cause too much confusion, but it's pretty simple to understand, I believe. So this is a two-tailed hypothesis test for the population mean. Hope this was helpful. Subscribe, comment. Until next time, have a great day.